Hello and thank you for joining us today. I'm going to be sharing some tips to use whenever you're replacing a cylinder head on a diesel engine. These tips can be used on any engine that you work on. I'm going to be sharing inspecting the cylinder head, the cylinder head gasket, the rocker arm assembly, the cams, and also we're going to be taking a look at the deck surface on the block. So stay tuned. Be sure to hit that like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you're notified when we go live or when we release a new video. If you'd like to schedule an appointment, you can call us at 972-225-3017. We are located at 4140 Langdon Road, Dallas, Texas 75241. Let's get right into this video. Okay guys, so the first thing we're gonna be talking about is the cylinder head. This is a cylinder head for a DD13, but most of the things that we're gonna be looking at and inspecting are gonna be the same. The only difference is this particular head, you cannot get it rebuilt because there's an idler gear that's made here on the head. Now, that idler gear is what keeps the overhead cams on time. So if they did try to rebuild its head, of course, they're gonna take some of the metal off the bottom of the head, which is the surface of the head where it seals. And that's gonna actually uh, interfere with the with the clearance on that idler gear. So that's why these heads are not rebuildable. You would need to go with a brand new head on a DD15 or a DD13, any DD platform. I, I would suggest replacing any head if you're doing uh, something like an overhaul or if you have an overheating issue, I would definitely replace the head on something that has higher mileage than 700,000. Just because you don't wanna put an engine back together and later on you have a failure and have to do this type of work again. Another thing I want to mention here is on this particular head, we already have the intake manifold, the, the coolant manifold, and the exhaust manifold. And the reason why we do this is it makes it just a little bit easier for an install. When we do remove the old head, these components are on the old head, so we go ahead and swap everything over. Sometimes when you purchase another head, the whoever you're buying it from is going to want the old head. So make sure that you replace, get all your parts off of your old head before sending that off. Make sure that all the plugs are in place, that you don't have anything missing. Another thing I'd like to mention is go ahead and paint the head. Just the outside of the head, you don't have to paint where the valve cover is gonna be covering or the bottom of the head. Because over time, this is gonna be bare metal. If you put it on the back on the engine, over time you're just gonna have corrosion and you're gonna have some rust. Uh, the last thing I'd like to mention is this setup here. Now, it's very important to use the right tools. This is a, this basically is, set, is designed for this particular head. That's why it has the hooks in the rear and the front. Now, it's very important to use the right lifting tools and the right equipment is bec because when you're setting this head on, it's very heavy. You want to make sure it's even. You're going to be using guide studs whenever you set this head onto the block. And if you don't have the right equipment and you're fumbling it and you're, you're struggling it, the edge of the head or a section of the head can actually damage the head gasket during installation. And once you're actually on, you really wouldn't tell until everything's actually operating and giving you a problem. The next item we're gonna be moving over to and talking to is the head gasket. So let's talk about that and move over there. This head gasket is a newer design. It's made of stamped metal and most of the seals are just here to be kept in place by this metal. The only place that it's gonna be sealing is right here on the rubbers and right here around on the top of the cylinder liner. That's the only areas that this gasket's gonna be sealing. So when you remove the old head gasket, there's not gonna be a lot of cleaning that needs done. You're not gonna need a scraper or abrasive tool. Most of this gasket is just made to keep all the rubbers in place. So to ensure that you're gonna get a good seal is Concentrate on where these rubbers are going to be sealing and that's where you're going to get a solid seal. That area and around right on the top of the cylinder liner is where it's going to be sealing. Okay, so we're over at the table and we're going to be talking about the internals that go on top of the engine head. Okay, the first thing I want to be discussing is the camshaft. This particular design has two camshafts, so what we're going to be inspecting is the cam lobes. We want to inspect these cam lobes to ensure that there's no excessive wear uh, that's going to cause these rocker assemblies not to work correctly. You want to make sure that you don't see excessive wear on the journals where the camshaft actually sits. On this particular design, the camshaft doesn't have any cam bearings. It actually sits on the camshaft housing, which is all aluminum. 
and then above that you have aluminum cam caps. This is why it's important to keep up with your oil changes with this particular engine or avoid adding any kind of additives that's going to make that oil thicker because it's going to da it could damage it with cold starts. So we take a look over at the rocker. The rocker assemblies, what we're looking for is for any missing pieces or anything that's worn on the rollers. You wanna make sure everything looks in good condition. On the exhaust side too, we're inspecting all the rollers on the exhaust side, making sure we don't have anything broken or missing before going back together with it. Another item I'd like to inspect is the injector, injector harness. With these injector harnesses are pretty basic but what you want to inspect is the seal that goes onto the injector harness for the breakout. You want to make sure that that's not gone or it needs another one because it will leak oil. Um, we're going to be moving over to the injectors as well. The hold down bolts are going to be neat. These hold down bolts, anytime you replace an injector, it's best to replace the hold down bolt because you want to avoid any kind of stretching or anything like that. The fuel injectors are removed and anytime we remove fuel injectors, on any kind of high pressure fuel system, we keep them in, soaked in diesel to avoid any kind of hard starts or no start condition when going back together. The next item I wanna discuss is fuel lines. A lot of these newer diesel engines are going with high pressure fuel systems and most of the manuals are gonna to say to replace these fuel, fuel lines, but some shops actually reuse these fuel lines. Now, we don't suggest reusing the fuel lines. At idle, whenever you have everything put back together, of course, they're not gonna leak but we run tests what puts a load on the fuel system as if it's under a load, high pressure, and that's usually when we see the leaks coming out of those fuel lines. And it causes a mess, you can call it low, low performance, and that's a good reason why to replace those. So the last thing I'd wanna mention is, since we're talking about injectors, when you put all this back together, when you put your cams back on, make sure that they're timed using the right equipment, uh, go ahead and put the rocker assembly back on. Go ahead and do an adjustment before installing the injectors because when you're doing an adjustment, you have to rotate the engine and it's not a good idea to rotate that engine before the fuel has made it up to those injectors. So the fuel system is dry. You start rotating that engine to adjust the valve, valves and jake brakes. So when you do that, you're forcing air into those injectors and it can possibly cause damage. The last item we're gonna be discussing is the engine block. So let's move over to the engine block and discuss that. Okay, so now we're at the block of the engine, the deck, the firing deck. This is where the cylinder head is bolted on. And this is what I'm talking about. You wanna ensure all, where all the gaskets are sealing. You just wanna make sure that that's clean and flat. Do not use any hard scrapers, do not use any uh, pneumatic tools, you can take too much metal off of this and cause actually an issue and a sealing issue. So be sure to just use rags and some cleaning solvent to lightly remove any of the old gaskets that you see in place. It's also good practice to cover up these return holes. You don't want any kind of garbage to go in there. It's very important to do these types of job indoor. Do not use compressed air. If you try to blow this out and say, for example, you have dirt around the area, you can actually blow dirt into any of these oil return galleries and blowing, it, blowing air in there, it's just gonna shove it in there even further. So don't use any of that. Just make sure to dry everything up, keep everything clean. You don't need any, you don't need any kind of additives. Another good practice is to run a tap in, into each of these bolt holes that hold this head, this head bolt holes, because sometimes you can have some buildup on the bottom of those, on the bottom of those bolt holes. So whenever you get a torque going, there's that dirt is gonna compact, it's gonna pack that dirt first and give you a wrong torque reading. So it's very important to follow proper torquing procedures, do this type of work indoors, so you're not getting any kind of contamination of debris. Whenever you are torquing, make sure you tor torque sequence from center out. Make sure your gears are timed. You got your cam gear back here. As you can see, we have it marked. But when we install the camshaft housing in the cam, we also have a tool to ensure that that's, that's timed correctly as well. On the camshaft housing, be sure to follow your torque specs there. Do not over torque. As I mentioned earlier, that's an aluminum housing, so it's very easy to strip the bolts on a camshaft housing. So this is what I have to share with you. I hope this information was useful.
Thank you for joining us. I hope this information was useful. If you like this type of content, be sure to hit that like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you're notified when we go live or when we release a new video. If you'd like to schedule an appointment, you can call us at 972-225-3017. We are located at 4140 Langdon Road, Dallas, Texas 75241. And until next time, be safe.